Tall buildings and packed freeways aren't the only common features cities share. Known as the urban heat island, cities tend to see warmer temperatures thanks to their development that absorbs and then re-radiates the sun's energy back into space. This NASA animation shows how, as the sun's rays enter the atmosphere, their energy heats up roads and buildings in cities like Atlanta the most in red, but leaves parks and shaded areas much cooler. As we widen the view and look outside of downtown, you'll notice much less retained heat, except in areas near roads and clusters of development. But perhaps what makes this weather phenomenon most interesting is that for all the heat cities absorb during the day, the most noticeable difference in temperature between the city and the country is felt long after sunset during the middle of the night. During the day, the sun, uh, sun's energy is absorbed by concrete and steel of buildings and city environments. At night, that heat is then given back off and allows the city to be warmer than some of the surrounding areas. As urban sprawl consumes space formerly filled with trees, more materials that absorb and re-radiate the sun's energy as heat take up larger areas. Tree canopy is probably the single most important thing to reduce excess urban heat, but in developed areas, trees are typically cut down, cleared for buildings, roads, parking lots, and so forth. Um, it's very difficult to replace that canopy, but very important to try to put more trees uh, in urban areas. While cities grow outward, larger areas can experience effects from urban heat islands, and that can be a very big problem. Heat kills more people than any other weather event and, not surprisingly, strikes cities the hardest. Uh, during the night times is when things tend to recover temperature-wise. Uh, when you're dealing with such uh, large areas of heat, uh, we are seeing temperatures at night don't fall off. So you oftentimes get temperatures uh, even in the 80s where a lot of times they'll drop back down to the 60s and 70s. And that heat stress uh, on the body continues through the overnight hours so you don't have that recovery time of cooler temperatures that you would normally see. So where do we go from here? As long as we have cities, meteorologists believe urban heat islands will always have an impact on urban environments. And though there's very little we can do to combat the urban heat island on an individual basis, one place we really can make a difference is in the way urban heat islands affect our everyday lives. That comes in the way we develop and build for the future. Pool roofing is probably the, the aspect of heat island mitigation strategies that have uh, taken hold in the marketplace the, the fastest and that's because it's the quickest payback for a building because it does reduce energy costs. One facility that is benefiting from the economic and environmental pluses of cool roofing is the Atlanta Community Food Bank. The white roof was uh, really a no-brainer in a lot of ways. The roof itself is about 111,000 square feet, uh, white membrane, and uh, besides you know reducing the heat in the area that very high reflective roof then does help with some of the uh, heat insulation, uh, particularly in the summertime, so it does add to the energy efficiency of the building. Instead of reflecting sunlight, another strategy involves using the sun's energy to cool buildings down using plants. That cuts energy consumption and puts less heat into the atmosphere than a traditional roof. Plants, uh, through their, the process of photosynthesis and evaporation, they will absorb the heat energy around them, so that takes a lot of heat out of the, the air immediately around them. And then through the process of evaporation, uh, releases uh, cool vapor to the air, essentially cooling the area around it. The U.S. Green Building Council in Charlotte, North Carolina, is pushing for developers to embrace green roofs like this one atop the Federal Reserve Bank. We're all contributing to the environment, uh, the impacts on the environment. So it's all of our responsibility. Back on street level, the city of Charlotte is working to cool temperatures by keeping trees in the ground despite the city's growth. Charlotte is currently studying its trees and comparing results from past years to help plan for the future. We've had intense development in Charlotte, but we try to uh, balance or good ordinances with sound development practices, and um, that's why we conduct these studies to, to set feasible goals. Um, a decrease in tree canopy is going to equal an increase in urbanization and subsequently an increase in the urban heat island effect. As cities like Charlotte, North Carolina behind me here continue to build for the future, any building strategy that finds the balance between urban growth and a smaller impact on the environment can be beneficial not only for the environment but for the economy as well. And any building strategy that lessens the amount of heat energy that's thrown into the lower atmosphere can help in reducing the effects that urban heat islands play on our everyday lives. Reporting from Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm Robert Duns for the Weather Channel.